into how music really does affect you. Uh, I'll give you an overall picture of it and I'll also give you a bit of history of it. So I'll start off this part with a bit more history. Uh, who remembers the Sex Pistols? Yeah? Punk came about, kids in the 70s were angry about the system. Uh, they brought out their own brand of music. The record companies quickly got a hold of this, the establishment quickly got a hold of the whole punk movement. And the Sex Pistols turned around and went, no, we are going to sing what we are going to sing. Malcolm McLaren pulled a really good one against the establishment and made the Sex Pistols a worldwide band where they were singing about what the youth of Britain were thinking about at the time. But then there was a big rock and roll swindle, as it was called, where Malcolm McLaren sold out to the establishment. And that's why today you'll see uh, Sid Vicious walking down the road promoting butter, just like Ozzy Osbourne promoting butter. Ozzy Osbourne, a couple of years ago, sang at some party for the Queen. They eventually sold out. But what they did was really took the piss out of the establishment and did it their way. Or, as uh, Sid Vicious sang, I did it my way, which was a Frank Sinatra song. But that, that's what it, it's all about rock and roll or rock music. It's about rebelling against the system what's in place. And the system what's in place is so satanic in its virtue, it's unbelievable where they are manipulating people, manipulating people into a false sense of security where they're creating a reality and saying, this is what we live in, this is how it should be. So if you go outside of this pop music, you're still out there, you're still a rebel, you're still whatever. They want to label you, and they have been labeling us since the 50s. It's now become a situation where it's easy to download music off the internet. Uh, what musicians are doing now is writing their own music, recording it themselves, put it on the internet and that's how they're getting their message across. But they're actually breaking the law by doing so. Uh, the laws have to do with copyright and to do with corporate laws, which I'll not get into, but like, they are actually breaking the law, even though it's not enforceable. But it's a sad state of affairs where somebody wants to create a bit of music, get a bit of a message across, and then it's against the law to do it. So they are getting our personal freedoms are being taken away. And people don't realise this. You got singers like, it, you know, lately, since about Michael Jackson. He was a protege of the establishment of music. And I, he started rebelling a little bit. A lot of press was put out about it, whether it was true or not about the kids and whatnot. Who knows? We'll, we'll never know the truth. But the truth was that he was killed. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he was killed because he started to talk and sing about what he wanted to do and what, how he saw the world. And it was different to how the establishment wants us to see that world. I was once asked, why do you speak out in public about stuff like this? And I said, I've tried music, I'm not a good musician, but I've got a message to say and I'll, I will say it. And people want to listen, which is a bonus. You know, so for me to stand in front of you tonight, yeah, I'm really chuffed. And I'm really chuffed that you're here in the second half and still listening. So the message I'm trying to get across must be the right one. But it, it's hitting some, somewhere within your soul. It's hitting and making sense to you. And this is what music is about. Music, if it's right, it hits your soul and it 
triggers something within your subconscious where you go, yeah, I feel happy listening to that music. But I'm also listening to the lyrics and I'm, yeah, I didn't see this. And you, you get groups which will try and convey that message across against the establishment. And like I said, some of these people end up dead, some get ridiculed, some suddenly like disappear off the contract with a record company and the record company says no they brought the contract. They're just like hushed up. But occasionally you'll get bands like the Dead Kennedys, uh, the lead singer Yellow Biafra. After the Dead Kennedys, he formed a band called DOA. Uh, they became very political in what they were singing. Yellow Biafra became that compassionate about what he was singing. He now does public speaking and has become very political. And he is very much in line with what everybody in this room is in line with. So if, if you, you want to check him out on YouTube or anything, listen to what he says. But listen to one of his songs, and it's called Full Metal Jack Off. You go on YouTube, put that in, and there's also a video with it. What he's actually singing about is the cocaine and crack uh, trade in America, and how it happened and where it came from. The American government tried to ban that video, so it he produced it in Europe where the American government could get to it. So it, the video came out and it, it's there on YouTube. But watch it, it's, it's well worth a watch. And it's well worth a listen to what he's actually singing about. And you're all aware of like uh, martial law being declared and about theme accounts and about how they'll depopulate uh, the population. This is what Yellow Biafra is singing. But he brought this song out 20 years ago. So since then, he's had about five, six attempts on his life uh, to shut him up, but he, he won't be shut up. Why are the establishment trying to suppress that? And basically, it's they are aware, like we all are aware, that music conveys that message. Music can hit points of your subconsciousness, of your spiritual being, what nothing else can. And this is why churches used to use these chants and use this melodic music. Uh, can you all remember the music to The Omen? Uh, it's Carmen Barana by Carl Orff. It was originally sang in the 13th century by monks and they used to chant that as part of their meditation. Hollywood grabbed all of that music and made it very satanic. So when people hear it, they go, oh that's that film about Satan, the little kid, the devil, the omen. It's like, no that's not really what that music is about. Well, that's how that music has been manipulated. It's been turned from what Christian monks used to chant into something which is satanic. And it's a good indication of how music can be manipulated. So you get these, this, the establishment, put people like Stock Aiken and Waterman out in front of people, and they're making music which just affects certain parts of, or certain chakras which affect the soul then. So when you're getting it like, a lot of singers go out and make the music, but you, you get the, the repetitive of notes, like a D note, it can get you depressed. If you do repetitive notes like a D and an E, it can make you either high or low, it, it does affect your mood. The one thing you'll never find in pop music is a predominant C note. C note makes you happy. It uplifts you. 
it also awakens your mind and your spirituality. So I find it just uh, quite incredible that blues music, rock music, metal music, thrash metal music is all based around the scene, though, as is classical music. There's a guy, uh, a professor in Japan, found a way of freezing water instantly and he started experimenting with music and because music's a vibration he was playing certain types of music and then freezing the water and it makes a pattern you know like when you put a magnet on the paper with iron filings on it'll show a magnetic pattern the iron filings will go where the magnetic pulls up this is the same thing with music giving a vibration into a glass of water. You freeze it and there's a symmetrical pattern. And the most symmetrical pattern was Mozart's music. And Mozart's music is based around the C note. So Mozart, uh, in my mind, was the greatest composer ever anyway. Uh, there's, there's bands like Apocalyptica play music by Metallica but using four cellos then there's orchestras which take rock music and play through orchestral uh, instruments and it's beautiful music it has its ties with classical music and in between all that you've got your blues, you've got your rock it's all from the same family of music and this is why the establishment are scared of it, because it is waking people up. This is why the establishment formed this pop music uh, business, to like counteract it and brainwash the young kids and say, right, this is it. What we'll do is we'll hire people like Stock Aiken and Waterman, get them to write loads of drivel, put stupid lyrics to it, and then we control the media, so through the media we'll pump it all out and nobody can stop us. And that's the way it has been since the 70s. And that, that's why in the 70s, uh, bands like Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Jeff Rotel, The Beatles, all broke away from uh, mainstream record companies like Decca and Polydor because they were the establishment, they formed their own independent record companies and then started selling the music uh, through salesmen and through networks and the establishment didn't like it so the establishment started taxing them very heavily so a lot of the super bands of the 70s moved to America where they weren't getting taxed as much so that they could still carry on and, and do the music the government didn't like it either because these people were rebelling. The government had set up this music industry and thought they were safe. But people who rebel will rebel no matter what. Uh, I mean, I live by the fact I've always been a rebel. And it's like, uh, I always remember Marlon Brando in the young one. He was asked, what are you rebelling against? And he said, what have you got? That is me. You give me something, I'll look at it and I'll look at it in a different way. I see things differently. And when I analyse it, I know I'm right. And I know you lot in this room tonight are here because of that fact as yourselves. You'll all have that in you. Whereas Hang on, I'm sick of watching EastEnders tonight. Sorry, I'm going to go watch Frank. Or I'm going to go watch somebody else. All this brainwashing crap's not working with me. I can't get into it. I'm bored. This is not what I'm looking for. This is not what my soul is looking for. I want something else. And you'll all know certain times in your life where certain songs mean things to you look back at them songs and play them again 
But this time, feel them and feel why you can remember them and why they were so important at that time in your life. I know uh, one of my favourite songs is Freebird by Leonard Skinner. That was because I saw him at Nebworth in 1976 and just after that the half of them got killed in a plane crash. But I had such a brilliant time that weekend and that song just stands out. And I, I still play it now and it brings back their memories. Another song was a song by a guy called Harry Nilsson, Without You. Uh, I didn't particularly like the song, but the girlfriend I had at the time when I was in the Rhodesian Army, she put in on Force's request for me, and I listened to it, and yeah, I thought, well that was nice of me to do that, thinking of me, but I never saw her after that because she got killed. So that song sticks in my mind, and it always relates me to Sylvia, but it relates me to a happy time with her, and not a sad time. So when I ever hear that song, I, I always have a smile on my face. I think, yeah, I was, I was happy back then. I was good. Throughout the years, there's been other songs, but all of them have that predominant theme, or, and all of them have lyrics which somebody has written from the soul and it just relates to how you feel at that moment in life and it's got a message across that the message is somebody else out there in the world has the same kind of love I have I've connected I'm with somebody else there I'm, I'm connected yeah the establishment I'm sick of this war I'm sick of watching East Enders I'm listening to this and I'm connecting with somebody else who's connecting with me. It might be totally different to you, but you have that one connection together and that's music. And I really saw this about five, six years ago. There's a band called Dust Junkies. They only ever made one CD. And there's about nine of them in the band. Uh, when I first heard the CD, I related to one of the songs on it because I was going through a divorce at the time. And I thought, yeah, that, it, it's good, this. Then I got the chance to go see them at Manchester. They, they formed just for the one gig because they, they are a Manchester band. Went there, uh, the place was full, about 500 people in it. There was bikers, there was metalers. There were skinheads, there were chaps, you name it, they were there. And everybody were getting on. And I thought, music has united all these different subcultures together. There's no animosity. There's just a nice feeling in the place. And I, I left that place stormed out my crust because everybody who was stood next to me was just passing me a joint. Be it a skinhead, be it a chav, whatever. And I thought, yeah, this, this is what it's about. It's about that universal love that we all have in each other. But music is bringing it out, bringing us all together. And that's why the government don't like it. The government wants to divide and rule us. And this is why they put that pop music crap out. It's why they poison us with the drugs that they're giving us. Why they they sit there and get you to watch football on a Saturday afternoon. East Enders, Emmerdale, Coronation Street, all that crap. You're just switching off from life. You're going to work, you're doing a day's work, coming home, just sitting down, switching that shit on on telly, and then you go, oh, talk of pops is on. Well, I know it's over it, but oh, there's a bit of pop music, watch that. And it's like, what the hell's going on? And I've said to all three of my daughters, I said, what bands do you like? And they'll come out with it. Right, what are they actually singing about? Oh, I don't know. Well, no, what are the lyrics singing? What are they telling you? Oh, I, I don't know, who cares? Right, right. I'll put this on. Bit of 
whatever music I've got at the time, just random them. Put them. What's that telling you? Oh, it's telling you about this war and destruction and why. Uh, maybe I should be advocating war and destruction. Maybe I should have peace. How are they going? God, I don't know, you're weird like, but yeah, I've never realised that about music before. There's a message there. There is no message in what we listen to. I'm like, yeah, no, there isn't. And then, fully enough, last week, uh, it, was, it was about a month ago I put on Facebook, uh, Peak Cells by Megadeth, and about a week ago, my daughter were around and she says to me, I actually listened to that song. I went, wow, there's, there's hope. And she said, no, the, the lyrics were just really what it's about. And I went, yeah. I, I can't remember all the lyrics, but I will say some of them, yeah. And it's, what do you mean I don't believe in God? I talk to him every day. What do you mean I don't support your system? I go to court when I have to. What do you mean? I'm not like you. I'm me. Yeah. There's more lyrics in that song, but just them four lines get the message across that people are different, but because they're different, they're not demons, they're not saying this, they're not bad people, they're not people like the establishment which are going around committing wars everywhere, which are killing people, which are mind controlling, which are manipulating us. More and more people are waking up and they're writing it through the music that, hey, we're aware of you, big brother. We're aware of the new world order. We're aware of you now. Uh, you're not stopping us. Music is universal. Music is there and it's making us all connect. And it's also starting to connect cross cultures where reggae and rock are coming together, where different other styles of music are all coming together. But the message is all the same, that we've had enough of the system. We want one love now and that's it. How far would the establishment go into that? Like I said, they've already killed people. They've already manipulated the music system, uh, the music industry. They're already trying to control it all. The next thing, what they will do now, is make it illegal for anybody to play music unless it goes through a record company. That is the next stage. And that is the stage where it will all be manipulated. They're already bringing in laws now to manipulate the internet and to try and stop you from uploading stuff what they don't want. You can upload something and the day after it's been taken off and you think, why has that been taken off? Obviously if it was somebody like a paedophile putting child porn on, yeah, take it off straight away. But if it's somebody about a kid from the back street rapping, about his neighbourhood or about the riots. That's coming from his soul. He's, he's talking about his environment and what's around him. The next day he's taken off by the government. Why? Why did the government go on Facebook and find two guys who they said were trying to incite the riots and then jail them for four years? It's been unheard of before, but this, this is where it's going. Now a lot of music out there, in the minds of the government, could be said to be inciting riots. So it'll be interesting over the next few months how it affects the music industry about these new laws that the government are bringing in. Now, if somebody went out in public and just stood up and started saying, right, Let's have a riot. You get arrested inciting a riot. If somebody goes out with a guitar and starts singing, and like people are walking past it, well, 
maybe one or two people stop and actually start to listen to what he's singing. Yeah, let's have a riot. It's not really affected at the moment, but it will be with these new laws that's coming in, where they're trying to shut musicians up and shut musicians who are very creative and free thinkers singing about the world that's around them, singing about 9-11 and how untruth it was, 7-7 seven, seven and the lies there, the whole new world order, the whole new music establishment, the whole media, how it's all manipulated. People are waking up and that awakening is coming through music. So that's the next big thing the government will attack and will attack viciously. Because music is universal. Music does connect with us. Music gives us what we want. If you're in a really pissed off mood, you go out and put a bit of music on, it uplifts you. If you're wound up, you go on, put a bit of music on, it can relax you. Certain types of music can make you kill each other. Yeah, the military know that and the military use it. Certain types of music can shut your brain down. And that's what the, the, what's being put out on TV at the moment, being put out on the radios, mainstream medias, they're putting that music on which just shuts you down and suppresses your way of thinking. And they're going to do it more and more over the next few years. Uh, so, so just watch it and just watch how the music industry changes and the style of music changes. At the moment, you've got a bit of a choice with music channels. You can put, say, like Planet Rock on or Radio 4, a bit of classical or whatnot. That will slowly disappear over the next two, three years where you just get one type of music on all sorts of radio stations. And the only way you can listen to that type of music is go watch it live. But laws and legislations are being brought in now where they're trying to shut that up as well. You just get it like a music festival. There's that many laws on having a music festival. Sometimes you, you wonder, is it worthwhile doing? Do these people actually make a lot of money out of it? One or two do. Uh, but most don't. Most do it just because they want to do it and they're able to do it at the moment. With the riots in London, uh, a lot of these new laws that are being brought in are affecting all of us. Uh, I, I spoke about this a few weeks ago to some friends uh, at a bikers rally. I said, at the moment, we're watching live bands we listen to music, what we want to listen to. Slowly they're bringing in new laws where we can't do this. And one of them went, oh, we've always done this. I went, well, did you not hear the guy before saying if it gets too smoky in here, we're going to ban smoking in the tent? I said, we're bikers. We rebelled. What's this about going to a rally and we can't smoke? What's all that about? And they say, well, it's the law. It's like, oh, it's not the law. We're bikers. But they slowly get into it through health and safety. Now, I can't think any more health and safety than sitting in a doctor's room listening to some crappy music or ringing up somebody and you get the, oh, hang on a minute, and then music comes on. You're like, I'm being bored by shit here. This is like, where's the health and safety on this? I don't want this. But it's happening more and more where that type of shitty music is being bombarded with and it's subduing your way of thinking. It's subduing your spiritual being. It's subduing your spiritual growth as a human being and as an individual. Along with everything else they're bombarding you at. But music is the big one. Music is the key to it all. This music hits that chakra, and that's 